Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. I'm sure you're probably thinking maybe, well, Bruce, has got to, he's going to be talking about the, the health uh, bill and all of the confusion down in Washington, D.C., the budget situation and the like. Well, that's that's some major politics, folks. It's unfortunately, we're not at the table, and and that that's a different animal aspect of it. Let's, let's just say this: that we will talk about this issue uh, past Monday. Hopefully, the people will still maintain their jobs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the bottom line is that uh, just just hold off. Give me about another week, and we'll discuss the results of what happened after Monday. That's a big day. I won't go into it because uh, it's it's a, it's a major issue. Okay, but again. Uh, there are problems there, but there are some other major problems here within our own midst, and I think that's what we're going to discuss today. Uh, there's an issue here locally, and I'll, and I'll mention this date here, October 10th, 2013, Thursday, City Hall, 2.30 p.m. to 4 p.m., presenting final draft of West Hayden Island Plan. Well, what we're going to do this hour, we're going to educate you. We're going to tell you exactly what we're talking about. And it just so happened here from the, in the local area, in the Portland metropolitan area, uh, you're very familiar with Jansen Beach, uh, Hayden Island, and this, that, and the other. But we got a refuge up there. We got a refuge up there, and it's it's going to be surprising to to get the feel of the fact we've got wildlife right here in the city of Portland. And for some strange reason, we're not getting it, if you will, in many ways, to the elected folks that we've elected to office. And I'm not trying to knock them one way or the other. The fact of the matter is, they they should focus on the fact that there there was a need here. Uh, the people that are involved in this process have, have, have spent a lot of time uh, trying to educate them, in, including the surrounding community, as to the importance, if you will, of the, uh, the, this refuge and, and, the, and all of the other aspects that, uh, are, that are living in, uh, in, the, in, in the environment. I mean, I can just go on and on over here at Jansen Beach. You're very familiar with Jansen Beach. When we think about West Hayden Island, when we think about Hayden Island, because it is an island, if you will, in itself. But uh, there's a certain aspect of, of that island that is, it has animal life on it and the, the environment, et cetera. You've heard about it, a lot of things in, in that same area. You're talking about CRC, Columbia River Crossing. There's been a lot of, a lot of uh, PR on that piece. And again, that's another subject at another time. We're going to be discussing that issue. But that's what we're going to be doing today. And I've got some, some folks who have been very much involved in the whole issue of West Hayden Island. So what we're going to do today is educate you about its, its beginning uh, its, and why are we talking about it, why, why there's a need, if you will, to maintain it in its present form uh, and making sure that um, the community as a whole uh, in, on Hayden Island continue to enjoy it. But at the same time, other communities outside of the, of the, of the, of the area of Hayden Island can also enjoy it. So and develop it for that matter. Okay, so with that, uh, leading us in this particular discussion will be Herman Cachel, but what we're gonna do first is that I'm just gonna show you a few clips on some of the some of the activities on the island that you're gonna be surprised at what you see. We're gonna show you a couple clips, and I'm gonna, we're gonna keep going, keep on talking on this, but Herman is gonna kinda explain where, we, where do we get those clips and where do we get those, um, those shots, if you will. Okay, so you're putting those on right now, David? Okay. So they're putting those on right now, and as soon as it gets on the screen, uh, we're gonna do that. But while we're doing that, Herman, come on, just come on board here. Yeah. And when these, oh, here we go. We got these clips on this. Here we yeah, well, go. You see those clips there? Try to explain uh, where Hayden Island is if you're not aware. Uh, it's between Portland and Vancouver in the yeah. Columbia River. Uh, the clip you're seeing right now is some deer that are walking on the 300-acre development area, with the bridges in the background. Um, if you go north on I-5 and you cross into Washington, into Vancouver, you've crossed Hayden Island. And, uh, and, um, but those, those, are, the deer. those are real deer. Those right? are real right deer. In the city of Portland. Yeah, our, our <laughs> friend David, look, look at this. Our friend David Red Thunder estimates there may be 30 to 40 head of deer yes, out on really? West Hayden Island. Wow, wow. And uh, they travel, you know, all over the island. But this, this particular, these clips are shot on the 300-acre development area. And what uh, this is all about, the meeting on the October 10th is about this final uh, draft plan that they have for West Hayden Island and uh, 
this started some four or five years ago, uh, this plan, and they've got it honed down to something that's still going to destroy 300 acres of the 800 acres on West Hayden Island. Uh, it's a rail loop is the plan, uh, a transfer port that will be transferring from ships to trains and trains to ships. <clears throat> no real development of, uh, you know, uh, lots of jobs there. It's a very uh, automated process. And uh, we want to save that eight, total 800 acres, almost half the island. Uh, save that for the wildlife and for nature studies and so on in the future and to uh, try to develop that or in 15 to 20 years it's not mm -hmm. something that's going to happen overnight right 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 and right. it has to go through other processes but still we'd like the city just to leave it alone okay okay you know well while we're talking and while we're looking at these clips why don't you introduce the other two people that are sitting up here yeah right here. to my right is david red thunder he actually the one that he's down there almost daily mm -hmm. um and he shot these clips and and many others and lots of photographs of other wildlife and to his right is tim helser he's a resident of the island also we all are um, and he's very, he's been involved for many years, for well, well over 10 years on trying to save West Hayden Island. Been involved with, back in 99, 2000 in the process then that was, took care of the problem for a short term mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and no development was done. At that time it was a truck loop mm -hmm. on 500 acres and now it's, they've got it paired to 300 acres in a rail loop. And, uh, and probably our biggest thing is, is health, the health impacts. Um, okay. We get a lot of particulates and things coming over from Vancouver now mm -hmm. and to add more on trying to do some kind of a development that has more diesels involved mm -hmm. and trying to get more trains on the main line where it's at capacity now. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to do something to if they want to do a development there to have more access for the trains. Okay, I'll tell you Just what, before we get too much involved yeah. in it, why don't, why don't we bring uh, David uh, Red Thunder involved in the piece here, because we've been looking at some deers, and we're going to see if we can get another clip or so on on the screen, and then we'll just kind of get to Dave. Dave, Dave's been there for a number of years. We've had we've had conversation. He's very passionate about this. And as you know, this, this was Native, Native American territory at one point in time. Yeah. For some strange reason, there's always this gentrification type thing aspect of it. I don't know how to use the word, but... But the fact of the matter is, it's it's a problem. And uh, but David is here, and David, why don't you just kind of share with the public about um, your involvement, when you got involved, and and start getting involved with that, the, 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 i.e. the the land and the environment and the animals. I mean, I I I I'm, I'm with you. So share it with them. Talk yeah. to them. Well, thank you, Bruce. Um, yeah, it's I got involved. Four years ago, I've been on the island five, but they said that the island was barren and there was really that the eagle's nest was two miles away. And I knew the eagle's nest was only 400 yards away. How long was this going about? About three years ago. About three years ago? Yeah, okay. when I, and I heard Bob, they testified to Bob that it was that far, and I said, no way, because I'm counting 30 deer every morning when I ride my bike. So I went and got my camera and I filmed the eagle and showed how close it was to the dredge spoils that were putting on the island at the time. And then after, I, uh, after that got going, it's just, I seen how I talked to Rose Ongoe from the Yakima Nation, and she said that things were being rushed, rushed. And so I wondered why these creatures that are so valuable to us really weren't getting protected, why the eagle just came off the endangered species list on 07, and they were able to drunk, dump dredge right next to it. So I started calling around. And where was this dredge coming from? The dredge is coming from the Willamette River, uh, I think from the Superfund, mm -hmm. um, from Terminal Number 6. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first time they jumped 55,000 cubic yards, it took eight months. And now they just got done dumping 5,000 more. Hmm. And um, it's just, it's, it's, they say that the project's not going on, but to me, they put 70 chemicals inside this dredge, which acts as a foundation base for the terminal that they are proposing to build on here. And so, like actually, sand, actually basically, yeah, basically, but actually, they, they had chemicals like that have metals in it that makes this construction actually developing is going on as we talk right now mm -hmm. because they're pouring foundation forms for it. Mm -hmm. And so anyways, um, I've talked to Rose and asked, why can't you do this? And it's like she said that the nation cannot get their hand caught into what things are going on in the island. And I realized that they can do the same thing with their property as a person can do with their own property. And to find somebody to, to take uh, notice of what the eagle is going through, I found it was difficult. I talked to David Leal from the uh, United States Fish and Game, and he informed me that they had uh, fence. There's a fence that circles this eagle's nest, and it's 660 feet, 
and it's about 40 feet from the river's edge. And hunters come yearly, and they shoot geese in front of the eagle's nest. And I thought, you know, what's going on? So I mean, uh, yeah, hunters are allowed. If yeah, you will, they're allowed to come to the island and during and shoot. Right, because of the state line, they shoot below high tide. It's legal for the state line, but above high tide is the ports land, so they have to kill the animal below high tide in order to. Well, I'm kind of I'm kind of lost a little bit. Now, what they on, are they going on boat? I'm very yes, familiar. Yes, they're coming in on boats. They're coming in on boat, right? That's so I'm on the boat, yes. and I'm shooting. Some folks are able to shoot the. Yes, and when a bullet, the city limit. a bullet whiffed by me, I went to there, and still it seems that it supports, it supports, they paid, I don't know how many millions of dollars for it down on, from PGE, but it's their property, and I'm so finding port, out. So the port's allowing hunters to, yes. to hunt on the island within the city. Right, and you think you call the Audubon, and they come down and say, no, no, but Bruce Salinger's hands were tied. Uh, Don Vanderberg from Oregon State Fishing Game pretty much can't help me out with a black-tailed deer on there because they're being shot also. So I, I just, I called Rose Longoria from the Yakima Nation and it's like I just, I was up in the spell. So you notice I came to your yeah, you did, place yeah. of business a year ago and I didn't know what to do on the island and you kind of set me straight a little bit. And and then now today uh, I've sat through a bunch of meetings from the commissioners downtown and it's like I did 30 hours a year listening to them and you hear all these different opinions and and then when it came to vote, I didn't understand why there were so many people who said they opposed it, voted for it. And it just, and, and uh, Don Hansen was kind of like their daddy leader. A dad figure said, I'm a, and she was glad that she, she helped them through the process. Mm -hmm. And Don was against, uh, Don was always been for the annexation. So it's like, who do you go and tell? About. Well, did the well did the port react in re regards to your concerns about that in terms of looking into it in terms of what are we going to do to save, if you will, they are this reacting. environment? They reacted by putting a sign up and allowing people to come down with their dogs and walk on Hayden Island. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I brought up the thing because it's like you cross the river and you got Smith and Bybee Lakes Wildlife Refuge and it says absolutely no dogs, F bicycles. I mean, because of the habitat, the wild, the black-tailed deer and. And I look over there and I don't think I see any black-tailed deer. I think it's, it's pretty much uh, vacant. I don't see any birds. I mean, the creatures from Hayden Island do venture over there to eat and everything, but they come back to Hayden Island to reproduce. Uh, when I got here three years ago, there was just two eagles on the nest and they had a baby. Now there's seven eagles on it. The, there's two nests, mm. seven mm. eagles. Mm. And so, and I, I noticed I quit trying to make it recognized because the port has done some more things. They put a fence around. They got security a little bit beefed up. They're helping with the homeless, but still, they're they're trying to de they're going the developing is going on. I Let's, mean, I tell you what we'll do now. There's Tim here. You know, Tim, you and I had this conversation before at one point in time about mm -hmm. the possibility somewhere in Beaverton or Lake Oswego. They had mm -hmm. sort of developed a similar kind had a similar kind of situation, mm -hmm. and they developed it, if you will, so mm -hmm. that people could enjoy it, right? Exactly. Why don't, you, why don't we bring you in on that end? Then we've got other well, areas. back in the mid '70s, uh, there was a large parcel uh, at that time just between Beaverton and Aloha, about 200 acres. Uh, that had just recently been rezoned to be light industrial by the county. And a number of us went, wait a minute, there are all kinds of uh, uh, old growth and uh, wildlife habitat. There are a couple of uh, creeks that uh, make a large uh, wetlands area. Uh, fabulous uh, wildlife uh, habitat. Why develop it into some kind of uh, tilt-up building mm -hmm. project? So. We went to the county, state, eventually to uh, Tualatin Hill Park Re Parks and Recreation that okay. found the money mm -hmm. and was able to buy this 200 acres from the Archdiocese of Oregon. And today it is a 200 acre uh, uh, nature park wow. under the uh, management of uh, Tualatin Hills Parks and Recreation. But it wouldn't have happened had a number of citizens not stepped forward and said, this is much more valuable as mm -hmm. a public asset mm -hmm. than it would be ever as a private asset. Mm -hmm. So now probably the greatest user of the nature park uh, are the numbers of school districts that bring their school kids there and they have their microscopes and their mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of uh, little chemistry experiments 
and they're studying nature as mm -hmm. it exists in this wildlife habitat. You know, and as we were talking about this piece, we were thinking about the whole idea of Northeast Portland and, and mm -hmm. Southeast Portland and mm -hmm. kids, and, well, the four to seven percent, if you will, the, the poor kids, and yeah. and you think about um, you think about the rate of graduation and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. You have to have to relate to something that you can maybe like, if you will, to be sure. motivated, if you will, sure. to be able to go in school and go in the classroom. And we talked about the idea of visiting that site and getting them involved and like this, that, and the other. North Portland is significantly deficient mm -hmm. in public parks. Yes. In fact, Hayden Island has one square acre wow. as the only park on that island. Exactly. And that you have 825 acres on the west side that would make a fantastic mm -hmm. uh, nature study center. In fact, there is an alternate development plan uh, being put together now uh, that would have that 825 acres mostly as a, uh, a wildlife preserve with some of it as conserved to be a nature study uh, area, uh, uh, boat launch uh, for uh, mm -hmm. non-motorized uh, boats, uh, some hiking trails, some uh, uh, nature education uh, classrooms, um, and it would be a magnet, an economic magnet for this area that would draw in lots of people mm -hmm. from all over the region who are going to stay overnight at motels, hotels, buy food, uh, buy gas, uh, travel in other uh, parts of the city, but they would use West Hayden Island as their destination mm -hmm. location. Has there ever been a rendering, if you will, uh, in terms of how it would look? Uh, there are some uh, that are beginning to form now, but right? about 12 years ago, there was an organization, major uh, funded organization that was part of the Lewis and Clark uh, Bicentennial Celebration, 1805-6, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that uh, looked at uh, the Lower Columbia River area as a uh, nature preserve area and how it would attract lots of people to campsites and to nature study areas and uh, West Hayden Island could be a very significant part of that uh, much larger uh, nature study uh, complex. Let's, let's hit, hit a few of those clips. Got another clip out there? Why don't you get another clip on the, on, the, on the screen there and we'll get David back up in this deal. I'm sure there's more that you got eagles and then you got oh. deer. And there are other wildlife that's there too. You got geese, you got ducks, you got all kinds of metal arc, the state birds. Yes, I like to mention that the Reynolds School District does come out to the island. I've seen them come out. They come out um, and they some they bus out there and the kids unload. And I like to say that there are 13 uh, species that are designated critical to the Columbia River, and these species travel out and they live their life out in saltwater, but they must come back to the freshwater and make a 90 mile trip, so on, then up the Columbia River. And I'd like to say how important that Hayden Island is for the tidal action, because after they make their trip down, before they get on the Willamette River and go to the ocean, they need this tidal action, and also to, to gain strength. And then what, is they, what the uh, Yakima Nation has put out is that the south side of Hayden Island and the fallen trees act as uh, aquatic organisms so the salmonoids can feed and then the birds can feed on the salmon and then so far the mammals go on and the millions of dollars that the nation and Crific has put into this restoration and it just like I said it seems like just to get the eagles noticed that hunters are shooting geese in front of the nest it just seems like at 700 feet off the river and so that seemed like that would be part of the treaty because as I read the treaty it said that Hayden Island was a usual and a custom hunting ground back per signing of the treaty. And it's like, when I think about that, I think... Is this 1855? 1855. 1855. Yes, and that's what, that's what it says. That was t in 2012. That was on the memo note from Gerald uh, Lewis of the from. Yakima... Gerald Lewis from the Yakima Nation wrote to the Port of Portland because they were rushing the project and they weren't informing them of what's going on. And so that's why I was in contact. But... It's interesting that it said also in that memo that there are still people that were in Portland when Portland was becoming United States in the Ground Round Nation. And I think that's remarkable because it's like when I hear about uh, the PGE and their clauses, you know, I think about, well, that's, this is the clause that you, 
but things were being overlooked, just like the eagle being overlooked and hunters going around it. But um, so, what is the issue between the between the part? Why, why not a partnership, if you will, with the private sector and the community for something for, for a project some reason, like this? What, what's the for problem? For some reason, and we've we've. Uh, 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 joked about this to some extent, uh, that the port seems to be of the belief that if if they as the port build this 300-acre uh, uh, industrial site uh, with uh, sea, uh, with terminals uh, for uh, seagoing ships, uh, that business will come. And the port points out rightfully that you have a major north-south rail line, the Burlington Northern uh, Santa Fe rail line. You have access by barge, you have major freeways, and you um, uh, have uh, uh, truck traffic as well. So you, you ha it's, a, it's a great spot to build uh, an industrial park, except that there's no identifiable market or business that would make this thing work. Most of us, if we're going to form a, a business, we would first look at, is there a market out there for what it is that we think we want to provide? And in this case, there is no market for whatever it is that the port thinks might be used for this major port. The only thing that we can find is that it is a transfer point, as, as uh, has been mentioned earlier, from producers from maybe uh, eastern Washington, Idaho, uh, bringing um, grain into this central area, that it's offloaded from uh, uh, all kinds of other transport onto ships and then sent out to be of benefit to somebody uh, overseas. On the, on the back side, there may be some uh, automobile manufacturers in foreign countries that want to bring their vehicles in, transfer them onto rail cars or onto truck transports and, and distrib distribute them around the country. But there's no value added mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from so this particular uh, yeah. operation. Mm -hmm. it, it benefits the producers on each end. It, it benefits the consumers on each end. It doesn't benefit us. It doesn't generate very many jobs. Mm -hmm. And yet it totally wrecks 800 acres, 300 of acre, acres of which will be paved over. But it certainly affects the other 500 because of how this 300 is configured. It's configured in a way that exposes something called edge habitat. And for, for uh, wildlife, edge habitat really kind of exposes them to too much light and uh, noise and predators. And there's not enough depth exist. for them to hide. There so exist. they're, they're going to be wiped out. So this 300 acres not only is paved over, but it threatens this other 500 acres of wildlife. So you're looking at 800 acres that is at serious risk. Well, the other issue I think that was brought up in a couple of meetings that I'd gone was the fact that once they developed this piece, all of the trucks, and then we got a very established neighborhood, if you yeah. will. There are yeah. a number of seniors that are living on the island. Major Again, problem. They too could have enjoyed, if you will, this, this habitat, if you will. But besides that, uh, they've basically take, taken all of their savings, if you will, and yeah. bought homes there. Sure. And, yeah. and uh, being able to walk to the store and I mean, yeah. What's the what's the what's the population of, of the seniors on the island about? Well, um, a senior. I don't know about seniors. It's about two thousand twenty two hundred of total population, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and probably there's a good percentage of that is our seniors. About about yeah. half are fifty and older. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. But but like I said, they, they, that, that that transportation, uh, the all of the, the the exhaust elements, if you will, will be exposed oh, yeah. to that deal. The, the noise. One thing the the, the port always likes to not talk about you know they is what is you know and it and they have talked about cost of development but um this 300 acres i mean it's not just like you go in there and you you know start a development on it they've got to add 15 to 30 feet of fill to get the thing up to rail height 
or they've also proposed doing concrete pillars that would just bring the rail line up to the height. So, because I mean, rail doesn't like to climb too much of a hill, mm -hmm. and uh, and that and then the other part of that is they like to sidestep the fact that the rail line is at capacity, and in 15 to 20 years it's going to be way over capacity. And how are they going to get a mile or a mile and a half long train on this rail loop with it getting off the main line? Because the loop's not going to be that long. Well, you so it raised, becomes a real problem, you know. Right, you right. raised the issue of health. Yeah. We have uh, about 500 residents in the manufactured home community that are within a quarter of a mile of this proposed development. Many of these people uh, have some serious health issues, mostly respiratory, some cardiovascular, um, and they're in a kind of economic situation yeah. where they can't move. Yeah, they can't move. You're right. So you're right. let's just say they're going to be there for a long mm -hmm. time, or at least as long as their health holds out. But what the consequence is of this port development is that you have major ships coming in whose uh, diesel engines are running to keep things right. going. Exactly. You've got trains moving back and forth that are mostly diesel. You have at least 200 new additional diesel trucks a day coming through Hayden Island to get to West Hayden Island, mm -hmm. right past the uh, manufactured home community, and then you have another 15 to 1800 uh, vehicle cars a day going back and forth. So the Multnomah County Health Department did a preliminary health impact study of the consequence of this development on the public health of this area. They found, and I'm glad everybody's sitting down, <laughs> they found that the state of Oregon has set a benchmark for what is considered clean air and what is then considered toxic air. Okay. The air within this community, after this is built, will be 55 times greater than the maximum allowed toxic air for any community in Oregon. And yet, the port continues to go forward. The Planning and Sustainability Commission has said, sure, go right ahead, even though we've had the, uh, the former director of the Multnomah County Health uh, Department uh, voting in favor of that uh, proposal. And we now are about to have the city council look at this. And what we're concerned about is what happens to these 500 people who are basically locked in to the manufactured home community and where they have all of this pollution being dumped on them with no place else to go and they're already in ill health? What kind of government mm -hmm. imposes that kind of consequence on their citizens? Mm -hmm. What kind of government imposes that consequence knowingly? On their sense. We know, Tim, this, this, is, this is a major issue. On, and whenever there's a concern by citizens, Maria, you're, you're constantly looking for leadership, for someone that you can talk to. Yes, we are. And in most cases, the people who are in leadership that you're supposed to be able to talk to will normally come to the community mm -hmm. and talk to the community from the standpoint of saying, why you should vote for me, because I will definitely represent you. I will hear what your issues are, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. And, and then all of a sudden, they get elected. And it's like, wow, there's another element, if you will, the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, then it, it's more money than it is. And, and I'm not trying to take anything. The fact of the matter is the port has to make money. We know that. Mm -hmm. But it's still supposed to be our money. Yeah. Because yeah. It, it, it actually it was the Goes citizens. to the general that, fund. That's right. Yeah. It, we, we own that piece. And But the yep. fact of the matter is there's got to be some way, shape, or form that they've got to listen at times a little bit more about who and what we're all about, taking consideration the seniors that are living in that area. Uh, people like yourself, David, uh, mm -hmm. even the Native Americans, our history, our history of the area, the kids who are deprived, they can't even go to the to the zoo, if you will, for that matter. I mean, the, the proximity of the of, of the island with reference to the community out there, North Portland, Northeast Portland, Southeast Portland, mm -hmm. for that matter. I mean, that that's that's an area. The other thing is that when you when I think about that, I've, I've fished down there at times myself, and I think about all that land down to Willamette. I mean, they've got silos there for the wheat and this, that, and the other. What are they going to mess around with this little point of land, which just sits right there on, one, on the end of a residential community, which they could even make parks, if you will, 
uh, uh, you know, i.e. walking areas where seniors could walk out in the open area, if you will, um, being able to walk and get kids to, to walk and look at the various types of foliage and, mm -hmm. and study plants and Oregon plants. I mean, you hear about all this stuff and birds. And I, so I'm trying to figure, I'm sort of confused. You know? Two years ago, two years ago, the city and the port commissioned some economic uh, experts to look into whether this project proposed by the port was economically viable. Okay. An organization, I think uh, based in Eugene, but having uh, offices in many other places, uh, did an in-depth study. It was called uh, Eco Northwest, ECO Northwest. Okay. They came to the conclusion that it was not very likely that it would pencil out economically. Mm -hmm. And this was early on. Since that study has been made, a whole lot more information has been brought forward about the real costs of doing business on West Hayden Island. If they were to redo that study today, they would find that it would be impossible for it to not only be uh, viable from the beginning, but sustainable right. long term. And yet the port continues to push its belief that it's going to make money. What's going to happen is that they're going to say to the city and to the state, and that translates into taxpayers, please put up a whole lot of money for us to make this thing work. And if it doesn't work, we won't be able to f pay back, says the port, our bonds on this uh, development, and therefore the state and the city will be obligated by law to then pay off those bonds. So you pay me now and you pay me later. Amen. It is just outrageous Amen. Wow. how ineffective the the cost management of, of this project has or been. Even just the concern. I mean, I, I think about the board and who are the folks who are on the board that are appointed by the board. They're appointed by the governor. Exactly, and, and think, approved by the state right, legislature. And I, and I think about Bill Wyatt. You know, at one point in time, he was working for Governor Kitzhopper in his first exactly. term aspect of it. And uh, he was given the job. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no open process. What a nice plum job. Well, what, what about huh? a plum job? You know, I don't want to get into purrs, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, a, that's another issue. With some, that, that, that is an issue within our within our state, for that matter. You know, all government folks are on PERS, if you will. And every, you know, and look, I understand retirement, the whole nine yards. I'm not on PERS, you know. But I, at times, I was thinking about it. I said maybe everybody needs to be on PERS since you know, we're paying the bill, right? Yeah. Okay, but I won't. I won't get into that deal. I'm gonna take a that's short another break. Show. That's another show. Big show. Take a short break, and we're gonna be right back. Uh. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Folks, we're back here. Look here, we've got this sign here. Hey, go, on, go on, Tom, put that on, put that on, hit that, that sign. Can you hit that sign real quick, right? And I'm just going to read the announcement. I'm going to read the announcement here. It says, don't kill our help. Let's see, don't kill our help. Hayden Island, help, don't kill our community. Yeah. Okay, help, Hayden Island, livability project, community. Yeah, okay, go. good. October the 10th, remember that date, folks. October the 10th, 2013, Thursday, October the 10th. City Hall, 2.30 p.m. to 4 p.m., presenting final draft of the West Hayden Island Plan, basically discussion we've been having, 
We want to save the site. We want to save the site for our community, for Portland, for Oregon, for that matter. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's a green state. You know, that's what it's all about. Yes, it's a green it state. Let's keep it that way to a certain degree. And please, Bill, you need to be there also, too. I'm talking about, <laughs> and all the board members of the Port of Portland, please be there and be supportive of what's this going on. I'm sure we can work this out, you know what I'm saying? And, I mean, that's what it's all about. We got seniors, we got, I mean, the whole nine yards. So please be there to, to be of support. And if you can't be there, call the mayor's office. You know, Charlie Hill was on the island, I mean, looking for your support. Uh, I think we supported them quite, quite well. Yes. On the uh, city, uh, Novak was there too. Mm -hmm. He was there. I can remember. I was doing. I was facilitating the the interviews mm -hmm. of the various candidates, and uh, Novak said he just loved this island, and I'm sure he's going to probably be supportive of this situation. You got Dan Salzman, we you got Kish. So. You know, hopefully they'll go on and and uh, and support this. And see, in fact, uh, Amanda. Yeah, Amanda. Amanda was there also too. Yep. She's always supportive about the right. environment. She understands. She, she gets understands it. what's going on. She gets it. And, you know, and, you know, it gets down to the point. You hear this all the time is, is that uh, we have such a divide, if you will, between the rich and the poor. We're losing the middle class aspect mm -hmm. of it, mm -hmm. and that's where the bulk of the folks are. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we've got ninety percent or ninety-five percent of the folks that are sitting in this area, yeah. and it's a struggle right now. Folks. Yes, it is. It's a struggle, and you need something to offset some of this stress, yeah. if you will. You got yeah. my point. And this would be a beautiful site right within proximity of the... There of the, are some major city. studies that have shown conclusively that wildlife uh, refuges that are accessible by the public reduce uh, hypertension, uh, high oh, blood yes. pressure. Oh, yes. they, they lower um, heart rate. Uh, they improve uh, attitude. Uh, they lower stress. It's a very healthy result having green space near population centers yeah. and and west hayden island is it has 81 species of birds nine species of mammals four species of uh, reptiles uh, nine species of moths and butterflies and a whole bunch of species of uh, fish mm. uh, all on all on one island plus a major forest of ash and uh, cottonwood. Wow. Probably the largest forest between uh, 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 Astoria and um, wow. Sandy River. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you saw those clips that we were showing. In fact, we had one more clip. Then we have another clip, Dave. Why don't you throw that on there while we're still talking about this piece? But to, to see deer, I mean, right here, I mean, what, what, what I mean, what of enjoyment would it be for kids to be able to, I mean, to be, maybe even touch the Everybody. deer, see the deer, feed the deer, you know? I mean, yeah. they were talking yeah, well, a little more yeah, about Yeah, Bruce, just you, if anybody goes over to uh, Smith and Bybee Lakes, you'll see right on the sign that says, nowhere in the United States of America is there this type of wildlife so close to the city now, limits. This is Bybee Lake. Where this is, is Smith and Bybee. This is just this about is right a shotgun away from Hayden Island. It's right across the river it's by, west. Uh, Portland International Raceway okay, is right race. next door. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. And uh, I, mean, I mean, I know that Hayden Island hasn't been annexed in the city, but if anything ever does happen like that, we've got a wildlife refuge pressed up against the city mm -hmm. limits, and it's okay. Yeah, and it's and it seems like everybody looks. Oh, by, by the way, look at these shots right here. Talk talk a little bit about it. you. You took those, right? Did yes, you I take did. Those? Yes. I, what, I, what did you do there? This is about five o'clock in the morning, and between July and uh, June and July, because the sunlight stays out and yeah. Um, I've watched his horns grow. They grow an inch a day. They're the fastest growing part of an animal, I guess, anywhere, as I've heard. But I found out that most of these two that hang together, they're probably brothers because there's uh, four points out there that are just beautiful and they walk around. But I've learned from the hunters and everything that since they're so condensed, about 30 of them back there, they're probably families hanging out together. Mm -hmm. And so I, these guys are in the same spot every morning. So actually it teaches me that... Uh, the deer is sacred to the Sioux, and now I'm kind of realizing that, you know, they keep that same path. I go to the same spot, and I see them every day, so when I look back, and maybe I see that, wow, you could probably just get on that trail, and if you respected that deer, you could probably have him for all the time. Mm -hmm. And so, not only do I learn back there, it's only a half a mile from my house, and I can't resist it, and so, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's something, but, you know, just to, just to go to Smith and Bybee Lakes, it's, a, it's about a uh, half-hour bike ride away, and to go in there and keep on looking for something inside that place and finding nothing, maybe some swans swimming out, and it's just, it's, it's horrible that, you know, uh, that this goes on like this, and, and to have Don Vanderberg last year write in the Portland Tribune that, um, the black-tailed deer, where have they gone? 
And the reason why he found that out is because uh, the $140 permits were being filled by the hunters. They were complaining. Right. Right. And so they found out it might be all the forest fires and everything else. So I don't know if they all swam over from the island, I mean, from off <laughs> over there to the island, but uh, there's at least 22 to 30 of them. I count every morning in the same spots coming running like that. And um, I watch these fawns grow. There'll probably be a shot in here about some fawns. I watch them grow. Uh, I was there the day he was born, or she was born, and I felt bad because it couldn't run with its mother, went up and over the hill, and he's standing there wild and looking at me, you know. And <laughs> you can't, you, there's nowhere I can go a half a mile anywhere. In you the know, state another of thing about you, David, is that, uh, you know, we talked and whatever, yeah. but here's a person you, in you that um, you're almost like the caretaker there. Yes. I mean, yeah. you're there, unpaid. Yeah. Yeah. You're not even paid for this. I mean, no. you, you, but, but the fact of me is your background dictates the fact that you've, you, you, know, you understand what the environment is all about right. and the benefits of the environment, yes. right? Yes. And I, so I was very impressed with the, how you, sh you, know, you shared some of those thoughts with me. And it was very yeah. much so. I mean, you're there, unpaid. Right. You're, you're very sensitive. In fact, you even told me a couple of points about the fact you saw some folks that were viol in violation and you contacted the police department, mm -hmm. right? Yes, I did. How did they react to the people? Well, you know, the police actually reacted because they don't want to they want to keep everybody conglomerate together so i was no different than that you know and all my complaints it, it, they they were telling me i was trespassing i was making a scene you know but one officer one officer mike miller said to keep the wheels greased and so he's a 30 year veteran so i kept him greased and now today the officers like you said they I've got legitimacy down there. They when I call, yeah, yeah. They, it is something going on. I'm not trying to gain something more than what it is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the beginning, I might have. You know, I might want to talk about the eagle, but it's like today, it's it's uh, it's a balance, you know. Mm -hmm. But you've noted vagrants there that are yeah, having right, open homes, fires. Yeah. That's the other thing, uh, you've yes. noted a 200-acre uh, yes. uh, fire. Yes. That, uh, you have place? good communications with the port. Yeah. You contact people at the yes. border. I do talk to uh, Marla Harrison, uh, Lorelei Reynolds. Yeah, it's just they're all the and they're all ladies. I've noticed. I talk to hardly any men I talk to. You know, they're all ladies except for PJ. He's the uh, zoning manager that drew the Eagles fence right there. But they come in with their concerns, but they got these um, policies that able this to do this well, to the Eagle. I mean, all, it's like yeah. I, yeah. Well, in all due respect, that's where Bill comes in. Bill White comes in. You know, he's a neat guy. I mean, I, I've known his dad. You know, and, and I've I've talked to Bill, and his wife has been in the. Portland Public Schools uh, for quite some time. I don't know whether she's teaching now at this point in time, but the fact of it, they're very sensitive people mm -hmm. with reference to the community. Then they live in the community. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think they still live in, in the Northeast Corridor aspect mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is that for some strange reason, it looks like this is not a, this is not a, this is a no-brainer. You know, yeah. it looks like people could get to the table, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, get this thing developed. They could raise the funds overnight. I mean, you, you would think that if it's done right. Uh, people would contribute to put something like that together. Yeah. You got seniors, you got it, you got you got the education system. In fact, I even think about uh, Governor Kitzhopper right now. You know, aspect of it. You know, here he is trying to make some sense to education because there's a lot of failure rate here in the in this corridor in the Portland metropolitan area aspect of it. And they're needing, if you will, some enthusiastic kinds of things that will hopefully get these kids to sure. to be able to graduate yeah. you know, from school. We got we got some problems, yeah. you know. Part of the problem goes back probably 15 years in that uh, Metropolitan Services District, Metro, right. looked at this uh, 825 acres and said, this is a high value industrial site. And because the state of Oregon has an obligation to identify uh, industrial lands that can be developed over the, last, uh, the next 10 years, they're constantly looking for developable hmm. industrial lands. Mm. Well, so the metro says, hey, it's a, it's a high value industrial land site, uh, development site. So the port says, hey, we're all for that. Uh, plus, we guess that there are going to be a lot of jobs and it'll uh, help the economy significantly. At the same time, metro says, this is also a high value natural wildlife habitat. They said that at the same time, because yeah. it was there. Exactly. So they couldn't deny that it was a high value uh, natural wildlife habitat. At the same time, they said it's a high value uh, industrial land site. So the port has continued to move forward saying, look at the jobs, look at the yeah, services yeah, yeah, that we're going to yeah. provide. And very few people except us and the 
uh, Audubon Society and uh, Willamette River Keeper and a number of others have stepped forward and said, wait just a minute, let's talk about the value of this natural wildlife habitat to the entire region, not just for its uh, uh, ecological value, but for its economic value, for its health value, yeah, makes sense. for uh, all kinds of it, reasons. It just makes and sense. so that's why we're so grateful that you've given us some time to help educate the public, uh, particularly for the October 10th yeah, uh, very, very meeting important. in front of the you, city you know, council. You, you brought up another point that is a very interesting point. I'm glad you brought it up, Tim. I mean, you said the, the fact that Metro basically said, hey, here's an opportunity to build industrial aspect of it. You got me? Take the animals out of the area aspect of it. But then what if, what if we had said, let's take the zoo out? I mean, I mean it's, it's very developer. You, got, you can put high rises. Put high rises there. High rise down there with nice views oh, of the whole Oh, we have a you can just Johnny Brook off. over that? You imagine, what, that'd be a war, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, imagine those kids up there in Lake well, Oswego and be with them. What, what do you think they would say? It's a natural zoo. Yeah. I mean, no, West no, it's Island. industrial. It's a natural zoo. No. Look at all that! Look at all those high rides. Boy, we can really attract. All. Maybe you can put the football deal up in that area, you know, and just kind of get a. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what? The, yeah. I mean, it, it wouldn't happen. Yeah, true. It wouldn't happen. True. You, you yeah. couldn't. I mean, they're the. They're, I mean. You well, could, part of the problem is that most people don't even know where West Hayden Island yeah, is. Yeah. Let's they go don't back even over that. recognize that there is a Hayden Beach. Island that yes, they drive yes, over yes, a couple yes. of times. Yeah, a week. Jansen Beach, but this is actually sure. Jansen Beach. But it it's a community a, there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a community it's there. It's a marvelous uh, oh, it's beautiful. Uh, natural it's beautiful. wildlife habitat. Yes, very much so. and, and to have it developed uh, would be a huge economic really drain really on would. our. Uh, economic yes, environment. Yes, he would. Yes, he would. Yep. Huh? So, how are we doing up there in the, in the organization? How you, what kind of response are you getting from the from the folks? So you got help. That, that's basically what help. You, yeah, Hayden um, Island Livability Project. Right. Um, vice Vice President Treasurer, and, uh, and we just keep hammering away the best we can. We're going to be there. We'll, we've got lots of other signs besides these signs. How about High Noon? Show. Are they involved in the process? Uh, they're they somewhat. Supported? Yeah, they're a little bit involved. Yeah, they you know helped out. They've worked and. They've got, we're able to get all the, there's nine neighborhood associations make up the North Portland area. And all nine of those organizations, the presidents of those, have all signed an agreement that they're against any kind of industrial development on West Hayden Island. And they've been on record since uh, last year and that. And they've, you know, reissued that statement. Because this wildlife area serves them too. Okay. I mean, this is not just an exclusive yep. thing for Hayden Island. This serves all oh, of yeah, yeah, all yeah. of Portland. Yeah, yeah, it just makes good sense. You know, what yeah. I mean, it, it's it's not like it's next to the zoo. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, here's something for the community. There's other, this you know, the the Superfund sites over in the Willamette. They need mitigation for those sites, and that's one of the things that concerns me. Is if they, you know, try and lock this into a 300 acre development. And then they wind up finding that they're going to need more than the 500 acres as mitigation. Mm -hmm. And what are they going to do? They have mm -hmm. this thing locked up. The other part of it is all the preparation to get this site to a usable level, a shovel-ready level. Mm -hmm. um, and then nobody shows up to use mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Then how do you restore that 300 acres? Mm -hmm. Well, let's say we've just put a couple hundred million dollars into this development that doesn't get used significantly. And given the, all the evidence of uh, climate change and uh, prospective uh, global warming, our rivers are likely to rise. We may have some very big surprises like you've seen in other parts of the United States. We, we could certainly have a, a flood in the next couple of right. years. And this is built in the floodplain, they have to raise it 30 or 40 feet to get wow. it out of the floodplain, wow. and here comes this huge flood and wipes out $200 million worth of investment. Jeez. What kind of a plan is that? Yeah. Well, and we have that treaty with Canada, the, nation, the United States has that treaty next year with Canada, 60 years has come up, and we don't want to buy hydroelectric hydroelectric power from them no more, and that dam is actually keeping from 1948 happening again, the Vanport flood. So it's like that level, but you know, about that, Hayden Island has been a dumping point. In 1963, they, it was a zinc dump, dumping, and, they, and we're actually living, the trailer court is living on a zinc pile. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that was reported to us by the Port of Portland, one of those many meetings I attended. But now it's like, when the first 55,000 dread spoils came on, it was shut down just before it got done because of the ammonia level went out of whack. Mm -hmm. And this ammonia level was organic. And organic is 
human, you know, the septic burning into the Willamette River, and that's where it's coming from. So, so the, this is a super fun they, site they, Well, I don't know. See, they, they don't. They didn't even. Bob it, told. It's Bob, on the edge. Yeah, it's, it's on, on the, the edge. edge. Okay. It's not in right. exactly the super fun site, but they're dredging near the super fun site, putting it on barges, bringing it around to Hayden Island, and blowing it onto. But Hayden I don't Hayden believe Island. that because there was transmissions that were bigger than trucks. There was bell housings that were bigger than Volkswagens that were brought up. And this is all <laughs> war spoils to me that were in that. So well, they were super, throwing a lot I mean, of things in the river. Exactly, yeah. you know, yeah. so they had to bring a special barge out, you know, to have them. Yeah, and so I'm just saying that right now to build that to, uh, to, to flood level height, all these are going to come from the river spoils. And it's funny about that. It takes a non-polluted piece of property to pollute. And because it's more or less shovel ready and let's get it dirty because you can't pollute a dirty place already because they know that it'll get out of the chemicals will get out of whack. But I asked what ammonia level, because ammonia is actually what we breathe. It's part of our existence. And I asked what it meant when it means out of whack to uh, Tim Spencer of the DEQ. And he more or less said it had to go back into the metamorphosis of a plant and read mm-hmm. re again and eaten by the bird and going out before mm-hmm. it affect us you know and so anyways it, it, it's just it, it's funny how the deq even allows this to happen on a, like you said they even mentioned it a uh, shovel rattled piece of property which means it's not tell me this how is media responding to you i mean i mean sure the oregon voters digest we're going to respond but what about the oregonians the one 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 state newspaper one they're in favor of development because they've bought the baloney that there are going to be jobs produced and it's going to uh increase the level of our general economy there are very few pieces of evidence to show that that uh, significant numbers of jobs will be created, and yet they continue to say, "Look at this uh, at this uh, uh, job growth that's going to result from uh, this this development." We're in favor of that. Who could be against uh, developing yeah. more jobs? Yeah, but what jobs and who's going to be working there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I- interestingly enough, there there are some construction jobs as they build this well, that, uh, yeah, yeah. 300 acres, right. but they're but gone. But uh, the cost oh, yeah. involved yes, yes. is is just so out of whack that that each job will probably cost about a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. But they need to give your side. You, you give you guys the, the side. What they you, don't what give us about today, any yeah. print. That whatsoever. should be investigated well, and they, educate the people as a whole. One you know. interesting thing about the Oregonian and the Portland Tribune. Their writers, Steve Dunn at the Oregonian and several writers at, at the Tribune, Steve Wall. Mm-hmm. have uh, constantly written, you know, yeah. this thing is a bad idea, you know, over and over and over. Steve Dunn's been out and interviewed uh, Cheryl Lund that lives in one of the floating home communities about it and how bad an idea this is. But then their editorial this goes the other goes way. The other exactly. way. They're not reading like they're not their even own reading reporters. what their own writers are writing. Well, they rap, they represent the advertisers. You gotta exactly. You got to follow the money. Exactly. Yeah. Follow the money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, follow that's why you money. see no pictures in the editorial yeah. page. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You see you see any pictures <laughs> of the folks who write the articles? You know, normally all the other articles have pictures of folks who yeah. write the articles. <laughs> when you go to the editorial page, you don't see anybody. Yeah. I've even had when, when, when Bob Miller was was alive, I kept asking him the question. Why can't you at least put a photo? <laughs> at least they got, they got the names of some of the folks. They've taken that out now. So. Yeah. Well, Bruce, I don't know. But, no, I want the photo. I want to see who's writing this stuff. Yeah. But you yeah. don't have that. So, yeah. uh, like you said, so I would say that, yeah. you know, hopefully get Dean or uh, somebody to. Uh, start uh, interviewing some of those folks, but we need an investigative reporter. The investigative reporters have done their job. They've dug down, they've come up with the facts, they've reported them, and yet the editorial boards who are influenced by the port have said, nah, yeah. yeah. So it's really. And, 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 and all due respect, it is a business. You know what I mean? They, if you, when you open the paper, there are ads there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you got some of these folks that may be on the board. Yeah. yeah. They may be on the board <laughs> and or have interest in, quote, I'll be making my buck. They're taking my purse away. I mean, not my purse, but <laughs> something else. I mean, you know, it's about the money, folks. I mean, it really is sad. So please, let, let's say we, we'll put this one aside for this issue. I'm, I'm telling the folks out there saying, look, for those guys who are trying to look at making a buck, of it is let's just sit that one aside look okay. at another site well let's let's talk about money for a second uh, at one point um, a 200 million dollar 150 million dollar bridge from west uh, marine drive near yep. terminal six yes. over to west hayden island right. 
was the solution to getting truck and car that. traffic back and yes. forth, okay? Yes. When they discovered that it was going to cost 150 to 200 million bucks, they went, oh, let's take that off the table and let's have those trucks and cars come in off of I-5 onto Hayden Island wow. right past wow. this 500 person um, mobile home community. Right, exactly. Okay, so we said, okay, if you're going to do that, we'd like to see what the health impact is, right. and that's where we get the 55 times Gee. greater toxic air. They want to now say, well, this bridge is too expensive, so let's take this money and let's just seal up these living quarters that these mobile home people are living in so that they don't have to breathe this air, but they aren't allowed to go outside. Gee, they just geez. have to stay wow. in because it's a cheaper alternative than building this $150 million to $200 million bridge. Take, the, take that expensive bridge off the table and let's decimate this uh, community with, with toxic air. Wow. Because it's a cheaper alternative. Wow. That's where the money's going. Well, on that note, I tell you what, we're going to maybe, we, we'll probably revisit this situation. Hopefully you all get there. Thank you. We'll come Thank October you. the 10th, folks, yep. again, 2013 Thank Thursday, you. City Hall, 2.30 to 4 p.m., uh, presenting the final draft of the West Hayden Island plan. Hopefully the City Council and the Mayor yeah. votes right on this deal. There's no, there's no public testimony, but no. we'll be there with our, no our signs. Testimony. And there'll probably be uh, and, television uh, cameras. I'm and sure there'll reporters. be reporters. Yeah. Well, gee, I'm such a bad guy. I got You'll that, be there probably. I got that Marine, yeah. but, I, but I have to speak. <laughs> See, and, and so I may have to run for office or something, uh, and I can make sure I get this on the platform. For you. Oh, gee, there we go. I what think the, I may be doing. One of the signs that David came up with, and I, I didn't have a copy of it with me right now, but uh, it's quick. no cash cows grazing on, or stop cash cows from grazing on West Aiden Island. I like that. I like that. Follow the money. Right. Folks, thank you very much. I hope you hopefully we learned something a little bit about this piece, and do get, give the mayor a call. Ask him about that. Again, this is Jansen Beach, Hayden Island. This will benefit the community across the board. Too important. Have a good one. I'll see you next week. Take care. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Bruce. guys. Right on, hey, good sir. job. Good job. Right. Good job. We didn't talk about that jacket. Yeah. It's a nice jacket. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Back. <laughs> hey, as long as my mom's tall, sitting on me, she's like, yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>